Good morning. Good morning. Good to have all of you with us this morning as we gather to worship, to hear God's word, to be the people of God gathered together in this place at this time. Um, you'll notice that Pastor Gene is not here. If you were here last week, you would have noticed that I was not here. Uh, COVID have gone through our house in the last couple weeks, so that's why I wasn't here last week. Pastor Jean is getting over it. She's really doing a lot better yesterday and today, um, but still was not quite up to snuff, so we decided to leave her home and let her rest a little bit more. So that's why she's not here, but we are on the mend. Uh, as we begin our worship, a couple things to share with you. First of all, if you've been here um, in the past 31 months, <clears throat> something different, we have an acolyte. Mm -hmm. uh, we had not had that the last couple years because of the pandemic restrictions <coughs> and working in our, our confirmation kids, but thank you, Henry, for being here. And um, we're also doing some new things with this. The, the acolyte is not in the bulletin as an acolyte, as a worship assistant, because he will also be one of the communion distributors. So we're kind of branching off into some new things with them. And um, it's kind of fun to have that back again. Um, in our worship this morning, <clears throat> again, just, just to uh, point this out, because we've resumed using some of the more fully, fuller, excuse me, fuller liturgy, <clears throat> At the, in the early part of the service, we have the Kyrie and then the Hymn of Praise. The Kyrie is on page 98 in the front of your hymnal. At the end of the Kyrie, there are two different hymns of praise. We are using the second one, which means when you get to the end of the Kyrie, you need to turn the page to page 101. It starts like about an inch or two, or a couple inches down the page is where the hymn of praise begins. So just be aware of that, that when we get to the end of the Kyrie, you gotta turn the page and go to the next page. Um, Beyond our worship, uh, it's coming soon, coming soon to a church fellowship hall near you is our Norwegian dinner. First we, uh, Saturday of November, it'll be a little different this year. Um, carry outs, but there will be a place for you to eat should you choose to eat in the building. So we're using a little different format. Um, there are signs out in the gathering area. If you want to take a sign and put it in your neighborhood, if you think you're in a neighborhood where that would be really helpful, put it in your front yard. Um, bring it back after the Norwegian dinner because we don't want to lose our signs. But if you want to put a sign out, please grab one or two and take them and place them where they need to be. And then finally, in our prayers this morning, we have a couple people we want to keep in, in prayer. We want to keep uh, Richie Storant and Carl Schmitz in our prayers. Both were hospitalized this last week. Both have been discharged. Uh, Carl to his home and Richie back to Bethany Riverside. So please keep them in your prayers. Continue to keep them in your prayers. And then I was asked to include uh, a woman named Rose, who is a family member of one of our members. Um, uh, just please keep Rose in your prayers as she is hospitalized, struggling with some stuff uh, that is pretty, pretty significant. Our order for worship begins with confession and forgiveness. As you are comfortable, would you please rise? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ, who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with hymn number 514, O Word of God Incarnate.
continue on page 98 in the front of the hymnal, page 98. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. 
He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip, hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We have some kids here. We've got a children's message if you want to come up. Come on, are you guys going to come up for the children's message? Come on up and join me. You guys coming? No. No. Oh, no. Well, I'll tell you what. Here's what we'll do. Um, I'll make the children's message the beginning of the sermon. How's that? That'd be okay if I do that? Okay, we'll do that. So, gospel acclamation. As you're comfortable, would you please rise and join me in the gospel acclamation? <laughs> to lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you may be seated. Okay, so I promised the children's message is part of the sermon. So I got a question for you guys. Um, do you ever go someplace for, for supper, for dinner, for food, like McDonald's or Culver's or Westview or um, Features? Do you ever go someplace like that? Where do you go? Where do you like to go? You like McDonald's. How about, do we have two votes for McDonald's there or someplace else? McDonald's? Okay, so if you go, who, anybody else want to, any of the other kids want to throw in an answer out? Where would you like to go? Chick-fil-A. Where? Burger King. Burger King, okay. Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A. And you've actually bothered to sit in line for hours to go to Chick-fil-A? <laughs> Was it worth it? I mean, do you, do you go for lunch so you can get dinner? Is that what you, I mean, that's what you always have to do with the long line. Or you can go for breakfast to get a mid-afternoon snack. I can't believe how long those lines have been. Okay, so if we're going to go to McDonald's, what do you order at McDonald's? A cheeseburger. And what would you order? Chicken nuggets. You can do those at Chick-fil-A, though, too. How about Chick-fil-A? What's Chick-fil-A got that you like? Okay, and Burger King. Chicken fries. Okay, chicken fries. So we, so, so you're gonna go. So let's imagine you go to one of those places, right? And you get in line, whether you're in your car or you're in the building, and you place your order. And what do you expect? Like, if you order a cheeseburger, what are they gonna give you? A cheeseburger. Yeah, you know what they're gonna. If you order a cheeseburger, you get a cheeseburger. That's how that works, isn't it? 
So I'm, I'm, I just read this reading, and I'm going to talk about this in the sermon. So you'll be able to think a little bit about this as I do the sermon. But the, 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 the gospel reading is Jesus talking about going through the line at McDonald's, but in a different way. Jesus talks about praying, right? And he talks about um, a God, a God who listens to our prayers. But then there's a little twist here. Because sometimes what we think is God is kind of like going to Chick-fil-A or to McDonald's or, or God is like going online. You know, you go online to Amazon and you order something and in about seven days the FedEx truck shows up and brings what you order, right? Isn't that kind of what we think? That's what a lot of people think prayer is about. Dear God, oh, I'd like a new BMW. That's a car. You want to go check and see if my car got changed into a BMW yet? No? That's what people think prayer is sometimes. You know, you pray and you get what you ask for. But I want to throw a different idea here, okay? So let's imagine, um, let's imagine that, um, maybe I'll pick a lyric back there. Should I pick on you for this one? Can I pick on you for this one? So let's imagine that you're over at Grandma and Grandpa's house and um, you haven't had a bad day and you'd really like to go to Burger King. But it really isn't gonna happen because maybe things are happening, but you crawl up on Grandpa's lap and, oh, I don't, I just don't, oh, I'd really like to go to Burger King. If Grandpa says we can't go to Burger King, does that mean that he, he just failed and, and what a failure of a Grandpa? No, of course not. Because when you climb up on Grandpa's lap or when you kind of snuggle a little and you, you talk with, What's really happening is not that you're going to get your cheeseburger. What's happening is you share some love with someone very special, right? Isn't that, isn't that kind of, That's what happens when we pray. <coughs> Prayer is not about, I ask for this and I get it. Prayer is about relating to a good and gracious God and being in the embrace of God's care, whether or not I get what I, you know, what I'm, what I'm asking for. So I might ask, dear God, you know, get me over my COVID. And maybe God snaps his fingers and gets rid of my COVID, or maybe not. But the most important thing is, God and I are in a, in a relationship together. We are together as I share that. So what I'm getting at for you guys is, unlike, you know, go to McDonald's and get a cheeseburger, that's all you get. I mean, that's all you get. Or maybe you get a Happy Meal with it, I don't know. But that's basically all you get. But when you pray, you don't just get, you get God. God holds you and loves you and, and keeps you in his care when we share prayers, when we offer prayers to a good and loving God. It's kind of what we're going to talk about here, too, in the sermon itself. So now I'm going to go back to the sermon itself. Um, we have this really weird parable that Jesus shares <clears throat> about an unjust judge. Odd, because Jesus uses <clears throat> somebody who is unjust and unfair as an example. <clears throat> now my problem is not that I have any, I don't have any problems with the parable. I think the parable is fine. My problem is... Good news, we're telling them, I have never been hauled in front of an unfair judge. Actually, I've never been hauled in front of a judge, so I don't really know what an unfair judge is like, other than when we adopted my daughter. Obviously, I didn't in court for that. But it's hard for me to relate to what it is like to be in a situation where the judge is not fair. And I know there are a lot of people who've had that experience. I have not, so that's just good news there. But... Um, just thinking about this parable, this parable, it, it, it's a disconnect for me. But then I started thinking, maybe the point here is not so much the judge is unfair, although that is kind of, Jesus works that in towards the end. But let's imagine, let's, let's have a little license with this. Because parables allow us to do that. Parables have a point to make. Parables are not about dissecting the story and figuring out how every piece works. Parables make a point. So let's, let's, draw, let's broaden the picture a little bit. This is not about an unfair judge. It is about a world 
that is not fair. Do we live in an unfair world? I had COVID this week. I'm fine. How many people had COVID and are not fine? How many people had COVID and simply are not anymore? I, you know, I, I'm, I'm relatively otherwise healthy. I've had a pretty decent life. There are a whole lot of people who haven't. I remember as a child, um, or as a young person, um, there were two people. That we lived in, in Western New York, and my sister had a friend, and I had a kid, I wouldn't say it was a friend, it was a year behind me, but a kid I knew. <clears throat> and about two years after we moved, both of them were killed in car accidents as teenagers. And they were the driver. Is that fair? Is it fair? You could say, well, there's an element of fairness in the sense that if I'm, if I'm drinking and driving and something happens, oops, that's not a good thing. But what if I'm the victim of somebody who runs a red light? Is that fair? Is it fair that some people, you know, come up with some great idea and get rich, and I came up with the same idea and nobody heard it, and I never got rich? Is that fair? We live in a world that is grossly unfair. I mean, that's just the, the nature of our world. Why is it that we are relatively safe here, but if we happen to be living in Ukraine, we might not be relatively safe? Is that fair? Is it fair that I happen to be uh, to be to be born to two individuals who lived in in a safe, relatively proper, rather very prosperous country, not to two individuals who lived in extreme poverty in a third world country? How, how, how did that happen? How fair is that? We live in a world that is not fair. But in the midst of that unfairness, we seek something, and Jesus offers us a bit of a solution. Jesus says, pray. In the midst of our unfairness, we are called to pray. We are called to pray again and again and again, to pray without ceasing, to continue to pray in the midst of an unfair world. But, what is that going to do for us? I mean, we just talked about that with the kids, that Prayer is not like going online, you know, on your computer, going online, to get what you want. Prayer is not about doing the drive through and getting what we think we want or need. Prayer is about something much deeper. Prayer is about engaging God in a relationship. Prayer is about creating that, that intimate relationship with a God who has created us and who has nurtured us. And I gotta say, just as an aside here, prayer is not about how we say it. I remember, this, this doesn't work as well anymore, but um, I remember doing a sermon similar to this about, um, oh gosh, that'd be about 17 years ago because my daughter was four years old. And the line I said was, I said, you know, my daughter will come to me and climb up on my lap and, and, and talk to me, and, and, and it's not prayer, but it's, you know, she'll ask something of me. I said, do you really think that if she consulted an attorney first, she'd have any better luck getting what she wants? Probably not, because it's not about the relationship with my daughter. It's not about how properly she makes a request. It's about our relationship that we have together. That's what it's about. And prayer is no different. Prayer is not about the right words. It's about the relationship that we create. But here's what happens now. When we engage God in prayer, we discover two things, two very surprising things. The first thing we discover is that in the midst of an unfair world, we are desperately seeking from God what? What are we seeking? Fairness, right? In the midst of an unfair world, God is just as unfair as the world is. <clears throat> the second thing we discover is that's a really good thing. Because if God is fair, I am in big trouble. I am in huge trouble if God is fair. The Apostle Paul says in Romans, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. 
all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And the only response we can give to that is, oops. Because that means I have sinned and I have fallen short of the glory of God. Now, Paul also says right after that, he says, oh, but, you know, the blood of Jesus is what saves us. But if it's a fair God, it's a fair God, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that's where we kind of have a little pushback. <clears throat> and our pushback is because we are basically good, middle-class, law-abiding citizens. I mean, I'm a good person. I'm a good person. I haven't stolen anything, I haven't robbed any banks, I haven't murdered, I haven't assaulted anybody, um, um, I have no speeding tickets on my record. I mean, I, I'm, I'm squeaky clean here. I'm, I'm squeaky clean. And surely that should count for something, shouldn't it? Shouldn't that matter? I mean, shouldn't God be a little nicer to me? Because I'm a good guy, I'm, I'm a good person. I, I lead a good life. And so we push back on that notion that somehow um, all have sinned. Well, yeah, all have sinned, but I'm a good person. But all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And in a fair world, with a fair God, I have failed. I have failed. And so, I come before God thinking, God ought to be nice to me because I'm a pretty decent person. But there's another level to who I am. On the surface, I may be the person who pushes back, who pushes back a little bit against the idea that somehow, you know, um, I mean, shouldn't I get something for my goodness kind of mentality. Um, there's another layer to who I am. And the layer down deep is the layer that understands I am flawed and I am broken that there are skeletons in my closet that I do not want you to find out about, that there are failures that I don't want to admit, that there are weaknesses, that there are, are things about me that if people knew that about me, they wouldn't think I was so good because I have my insecurities, I have those things. I think we all wrestle with that to some extent, that deep down inside there is that notion that I'm not what I appear to be. In fact, I am very undeserving of anything more. And in the midst of that, of that, that, that tension between those two, I encounter a good and gracious God. And I encounter that God in a variety of ways, one of which is through my prayer. Through my, my prayer presence with God. And I discover in that prayer presence that God is not fair because the unfair God continues to embrace me even though I am not deserving, even though I am not what I ought to be or think I should be. An unfair God embraces me and holds me. And then I discover that it is the unfair God who showers me with life and blessings, who gives to me the hope that I have in the crucified Jesus, the crucified Jesus who died for me even though I have earned and deserve nothing. The unfair God, who in the midst of an unfair world gives me life and hope even in the midst of hurting times. And it begins at least as I receive it, as I sense it, as I discover it, when I turn to that unfair God in prayer. Now remember what I said, you know, it's not about the words you use, not about how you do it. Maybe that prayer is simply looking up to the heavens and saying, oh God, help. Where are you today? I'm, I'm struggling. Maybe that's the prayer. I went, through a, I went through a phase of life like that, back when I was late high school, early college, where my, my favorite, my, my prayer style of choice was just look up and say, okay, what's going on? What are we doing here, you know? What's happening? But however you choose to engage a good and gracious God in a, in a connective relationship, however you choose to lift up your cares and your concerns, however you choose to confess who you are, even though God already knows, to confess who and what you are, you do so with an unfair God who cannot wait to embrace you, who cannot wait to hold you and give you life and hope through the crucified 
and the risen Jesus, the unfair God who is full of grace and love in the midst of a very cold, in the midst of a very difficult and dark, unfair world. And that's where we find our life. We find our life, not because we <coughs> dial up the prayer and get what we want, but because we dial up the prayer and we get Jesus. The love of Jesus. The love of Jesus that will never, ever let us go. Amen. We continue with the singing of hymn number 669, Rise Up, O Saints of God. Hymn number 669, as you are comfortable, would you please rise? For all who are lonely, especially those who have newly arrived in an unfamiliar 
becomes a place of challenge and safety. They discover God's call to faithful living, but also God's gifts of grace in Jesus. And all of this in the context of a community that seeks to nurture and grow faith and faithful living. <coughs> Students at Lumen worship every Sunday evening. I don't know if they're doing it right now at the exact time, but the, the old standard was they would worship on Sundays at 6.06. Because they discovered kids remember that a lot better than 6 o'clock. So 6.06 .06 was when they would worship. And uh, they gather for Bible study. They reach out to other students. They do. Uh, Lumen is known for their cookies. They distribute cookies every Wednesday at the center of campus just as a gift, a free gift. No strings attached, no pamphlets, no, no, you know, testimonials. While they just take a cookie and go and smell a came from Lumen. That's all they do. Um, they become <clears throat> a voice of welcome and healing to students in the midst of a very broken world. And then the hope is, and we've seen this happen, the, we, we've, we've seen this happen. The hope is when the students go on, they become leaders in faith communities all over the place. They become seeds, so to speak. So thank you for your support that makes this happen, your support to us, um, your support to us that allows us to support Lumen. If you want more information on Lumen, and they, they use their old web address, but it works, um, if you want to check, check out their website at www.lax, across L-A-X, C-G, stands for Common Ground, which is the building there at laxcg.org, you can find out more about Lumen. But again, thank you for your support that allows us to be supportive of the ministry that they do with young adults. As you are comfortable, would you please rise? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed our right, our duty, our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. <clears throat> Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Would you please join me in the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
Christ invites you to this table, come, taste, and see. Please remember that as we uh, participate, as we partake of the supper, we have regular wafers along with the free wafers. We also have grape juice and wine available. If you need the grape juice, please indicate that to us as you come forward. Come, for all is ready. You may be seated. If you are comfortable, would you please rise and would you pray with me? God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we may serve our neighbors with joy. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Amen. The closing hymn is hymn number 769. If you but trust in God to guide you, hymn number 769.
with Christ beside you, 